We also have Secret, which at this point I just think Roblox is trolling us. Like, this, this cannot be a real thing. This thing has literally stolen the souls of so many developers, I can't even start counting. The main thing that makes Roblox stand out from stuff like Unity, um, you know, Godot, uh, Unreal Engine 5, is that Roblox is f stupid which leaves developers confused not because it's like you know complex or anything because it's not complex right it's really simple but just because it has basically no patterns and the moment it actually starts forming a pattern and you can somewhat follow it it just breaks it off completely because most developers look for patterns so they're like okay well if this does this thing well then this similar thing probably does a similar thing and roblox like somewhat somewhat follows this until it just says actually no uh ha ha you. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with what I know for a fact every single person who's ever touched Roblox Studio has experienced. And it's basically just the fact that a model is as far away from a model as you could possibly imagine. If you look at a model's description, right, and even just using common sense, it says uh, they group objects together, right, so for parts and everything. So you might be saying, okay, well, if I make several parts, and I want to make them into a model. So we have a part over here, and then we have a part over here, right? Look at my beautiful creation, okay? It's very nice. The issue is, if I actually play the game, they fall, right? And I don't want that to happen. I want all of them to be grouped together. Because then if they fall, they're gonna fall all together as one model, right? So then I can just, you know, right click, group as a model, perfect. Does that fix the problem? Haha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like, I'm sure that models probably have like some scripting functionality, because you know, otherwise, isn't a model just a glorified folder? Because, you know, you can put items in folders and you can put items in models. So what's the big difference? And that's what every beginner thinks, right? So, they're you know, they put a script inside of the model and then, you know, they make a variable for the model. So local script.parent. The only thing that you can do with a model is move it to something, which you might say, OK, that's actually really nice. right? So we can give it a, you know, X, Y and Z coordinate. So let's say 0, 10, 0. So it's going to move it above the spawn location, OK? So you might be thinking, okay, at least it does something right. But just give me a second, okay? Because I'm going to show you something right now, and then we're going to come back to this move to function, and then I'll show you why literally no one likes using it ever. So remember how I told you how like, oh yeah, if I run this game, then the models all fall. Or rather, I should say, how do we make it so that they still fall, but as one individual part? Because as you can see, when I actually hover my mouse over it, the outline seems to suggest that this is all one part, right? So what you have to do is you have to find a part that's supposed to be like the primary part, so models have this thing. They have a property called primary part. So let's say the primary part is going to be the one at the bottom. What you then have to do is you have to add in a weld constraint for every other part. So there's two parts. So we need two weld constraints. And then the weld constraint needs a part zero and a part one with part zero being, you know, the part that they're under like so. And then part one being the other part. So for the first weld constraint, it's this part. For the second weld constraint, it's this part. And when you do it like this, then, yeah, there we go. And it's like, okay, that works, I guess, but what's the point of the model then? I, you know what I could do? You know what I could do? I could make a folder right now. I'll do it right now out of spite, out of pure spite. Wow, wow, guys, would you look at that? <laughs> and remember how I told you how we're gonna come back to move to and why it's bad? What I'll do is I'll anchor all of these parts that, you know, they're not like affected by gravity. And so what I've just done is I just wrote some code, which basically just means that every one second, we're gonna clone this model, okay? And then we're gonna move it to vector 0, 10, 0, right? So what you would expect is like, okay, it's gonna clone this model, it's gonna move it to the, you know, vector 0, 10, 0, and then because the model is anchored, it's just gonna stay there. So then when it makes another model, it's gonna put that model inside of the previous model and so on. And you know what happens? Move 2? It doesn't. The issue with move 2 is that it does not allow models to go inside another model, which might seem kind of obvious to you, like, oh yeah, what's the problem with that? But the issue is like, when I give it concise coordinates, I want it to be at these exact coordinates, right? And so what move to does is it just says, haha, no, you can't. And it just, this isn't, what position, what position is this model at? 0, 58, 0. It's 48 studs off. The next thing is the heavy confusion of server versus client. And this is something I actually talked about in a couple of my recent videos, right? The main idea of server versus client is that client is how you perceive the game, while the server is basically just a neutral overview of the game. So in a real Roblox game, the client is basically ran by your device, right? while the server is ran by actual Roblox servers. But the issue here is that sometimes both of these don't show exactly the same information. And let me show you what I mean, right? If I just take this model right now and I just delete it, and then I go to the server, the model is still there, 
it's still a thing, right? But then for me, the model stopped existing. If you're confused about this, I do have like a couple other videos you could watch after this one. But let me show you why this messes up a lot of games, right? Let's say, for example, okay, for example, I just had a script. And then let's say that, okay, every one second, we're gonna, you know, get the workspace.model, um, like so. And then we're just gonna set its name, okay? To be equal to model obviously this is a stupid change that does nothing but like let's assume that this is a real game and like this is a very important change that we're trying to make and so now that i'm playing this game okay the script is being ran now we don't see anything happening but the fact that we aren't getting any errors means that everything's working fine right now if i go to my clients right and then i you know delete this model like so the model doesn't exist anymore but the script isn't giving us any errors, right? But then if I go on the server, we can see like, okay, the model is still here, right? And then if I delete the model, then it's gonna, yeah, model is not a valid member of workspace. Now in this example, this isn't like really a big problem, but I would have so many moments where like, I would have a server script and let's say I was looking for the model. And then it's like, I would play the game and I'd be on my client and I would check the workspace and I would see the model, but then the script would tell me like, oh yeah, but model doesn't exist. And I was so confused and it legit took me like an hour of browsing Google to even learn what server was. And then I click on the server and then, you know, it, that doesn't have the model. And then I'm kind of like, okay, I, this kind of makes sense now, right? But I have seen a bunch of developers being confused about this. Like, bro, uh, like it's saying that model isn't a valid member, but uh, I, I can see the, the model right here, right? Uh, why isn't, <laughs> why is it giving me an error? It's because it's on the server. So click on the server, fix it, and yeah. Another very heartbreaking discovery is that you have to manually save people's data. Because you know how Roblox has these like leaderboards on the top right where it like shows how much cash the player has? Let me actually script that right now. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. So like if I play the game right now, right, and I go on the server, the way it works is that the player needs to have a folder inside of them called leader stats. So exactly called leader stats, right? And then inside of that folder, you add number values, right? So I can name this like cash, and then I could set this to like 100 or whatever, right? And then what that's gonna do is it's gonna show you this leaderboard. And so what a lot of people do, right, is they basically just check whenever a player actually, you know, joins their game. So, you know, they get the player, everything. And so then what they do is they just make a folder, you know, put it inside the player, and then they make an int value and put that inside of the folder, right? So then what happens is that when a player joins the game, there you go. They have their nice leader set value. If let's say on the server, right, they have like a thing where like, let's say if I click on this model, I get 10 cash, for example, right? So then value goes up to 10. Okay, there we go. Now I have 10 value. And then if I leave the game, okay, so I leave the game and then I come back to play the game, my value is back at zero. I've seen so many questions about this, like, oh, why isn't my value saving? Am I supposed to publish the game to Roblox? And no, you don't have to publish your game to Roblox. All you have to do is write this script, which I will say that I teach this script and basically everything we're gonna cover in this video inside of my course, which you can find in the description, blah, blah, blah. Now these ones were confusing, but like they make a lot more sense when I actually talk about them, right? Like, okay, yeah, it makes sense, you know, why the data doesn't save or, you know, why the models aren't working somehow. But then this next one is legitimately just a waste of time. I have no idea why they have this here. I, I, I genuinely have no clue what Roblox was smoking. They have two colors. It's actually confused the hell out of me. It's like, it doesn't seem that important. Like, okay, well, yeah, you have two colors, just pick one. And it doesn't like seem that important. Like, like maybe you're thinking, okay, maybe brick color is for the actual like, you know, brick. And then maybe color is for like the material, right? But it's not. If I change the brick color to be like sign or whatever, it changes the color. If I change the color, it then changes the brick color. These two are literally coexisting for no real reason. And what makes it worse is that the brick color is literally just a worse version of color. Because how it works, right, is that it has this, you know, little color spectrum, and every color has its own unique name. So inside of a script, I could say like, okay, parts.brick color equals seashell. Or I could say parts.brick color equals mulberry, right? So basically, if I'm using a brick color, I am limited to using these colors only. But then if I'm using color, I literally get the entire color wheel. And the only difference here is that instead of having a fun name like toothpaste, it just uses RGB values. What a lot of beginners find confusing is scripting in general, which I know kind of makes sense, right? But then you have stuff like coroutine. I specifically remember watching like a beginner Roblox tutorial like three years ago, right? And this guy, literally 20 minutes in, just says like, hey, hey guys, by the way, uh, we're gonna use a coroutine, but I'm not gonna explain, so you know, just, just, so I literally just copied and pasted his code, and then my code just ended up being full of coroutines, and I had no idea what these do. Coroutine.yield, or coroutine 
is yieldable because for the most part scripts are fairly simple like okay you know you have local variables and you can you can assign them to numbers and then you know you have loops and then if you if you want to change the property of something well then you know you say workspace and then you get that you know thing but here it's like what's an enum bro enum dot humanoid display distance type what does this mean and there's a lot more stuff right we got um you know p calls uh we got x p call which you know i don't even know what that is we also have secret which at this point i just think roblox is trolling us like this this cannot be a real thing and if scripts weren't confusing enough the next thing which is stupid which is also purple just like this model is something called a module script. Unlike a regular script, this script does nothing. Okay, basically it just has like a table and then it just returns a table. And then the idea is that you can like put functions and variables inside of this table. And then from any script, you can basically get this table and then, you know, use the variables and functions inside of this table. But where they get confusing for developers is, it's like I said before, a lot of beginners, they want to understand why something is done. Because when you're confused by something, it's just because you don't know what that thing does. You don't know the purpose behind that thing. And it's the same with module scripts. You might be asking right now, like, oh yeah, why do I need a module script? Like, why do I need to have a table here where I could just make a table here? You could literally take this code, right? You could just copy it over here. And you could just do the same thing. It just, it just instead of returning the module, you just have it in your script, right? So you can just say like, oh yeah, module dot new function is equal to, you know, function. And then you make your function. And then this, this is what people do in module scripts, right? So instead of doing this here and then having to, you know, call like um, require on it, which is how you get the table. Why couldn't you just do all of this inside the actual script? Now, the answer is that like, yeah, like these things are valuable because it's just one table that can be full of like a bunch of functions. Because let's say, for example, you have like um, a game based around abilities, right? And let's say you have like five of these scripts that need to actually access a table of like functions that perform these abilities. And you could just copy the table inside all of the five scripts, or you could just have this table be inside of this module script. And then whenever you actually need to access the table, you can just say like local module is equal to require, and then you get the module. So in this case, it's inside of our script. So we'll just say script dot module script. And then yeah, from there you can just have module and then you can just access whatever is inside the table. The second to last confusion is this idea of player versus character. To sum it up, this is your character, okay? This is your actual physical presence in the game. But then the thing is, what if I respawn, okay? What if I, what if I reset my character, right? Well, then for a split second, my character stops existing, right? Like, he, he kind of still exists, but there's like a split second where my character gets deleted. And so obviously, in that little moment where my character is deleted, Roblox still needs to know that I'm actually playing the game. So the way Roblox handles this is that your character is inside of the workspace. So it's a model, right? It has like, you know, your, all of your accessories, your humanoid, it has all of these, you know, parts. So I could delete my head. And then that kills me, right? So that probably wasn't a good idea. But then if you want to get the actual player, well, then you go to players, right? And then this is my player, which contains all of the actual like data, right? So it has my, you know, player user interface. It contains my player script. It has like the backpack, which is like your inventory. And then the player itself contains stuff like what the character is, right? Uh, the character appearance ID, the display name. I'm just saying, right? Because if you ever want to like teleport, you know, the player's character somewhere, the way you do this is you just change the position of their humanoid roots part, right? But then like I would tell this to people and then you know what they do? They would like send me a script of like, oh, am I doing this right? And the script was like game.players.theoriginallamp.humanoidrootpart.position. And then the script would tell them like, oh, uh, the player doesn't have a humanoid root part. And then they would send me a screenshot and then they would be like, uh, it's saying that there's no humanoid root part, but it's like in my game, they clearly have a humanoid root part. And I'm like, bro, you're accessing the player, not the character. And the last, but definitely not least confusion is user interface, okay? This thing has literally stolen the souls of so many developers, I can't even start counting. You know, you got buttons, you got labels and everything, right? And then you have a viewport frame. I'm not even about to start explaining what this thing does. You have a video frame, okay? And if that wasn't bad enough, if you just want a button, right? Okay, you can move it around, you know, very nice. And then let's say you want to change the size, right? X and Y, scale and offset. What the hell is scale? What the hell is offset, right? Oh, what is this? Oh, when, when I lower the screen, uh, the button isn't scaling along with the screen. How do I fix that? Well, I need to change the scale. Oh, but then what, what is offset? What, what is scale? And the scariest part is that that's actually like the easiest thing to learn about GUI. Eventually, you're going to start working with like UI P 
page layout, that's when you're gonna start to like appreciate user interface in games a lot more. But hopefully this video convinced you to start Roblox development. If this video unironically made you want to start developing Roblox Studio, the first few lessons of my course are actually free to watch. So if you want to get like an actual high quality and modern guide to Roblox Studio, and not like a stupid beginner tutorial where some guy is talking to you about like, oh, coroutines, haha, coroutines, then click on the top link in the description. Or maybe not top link, I don't know, it's, it's gonna be one of the links. And yeah, you know, if you want to reward me for my three years of suffering with this terrible application, I do quite like the idea of having a silver play button. So if this video helped you, then, you know, feel free to subscribe. And as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.